Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. Our June prompt in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group is watercolours, although there's flexibility to use any water-soluble media or even watered-down acrylics. Our challenge for this week is negative painting. Now, a lot of you will know what this is, but I'm just going to do a very quick demonstration of what it means, just in case you're unfamiliar with it. So let's just draw a series of shapes. In normal painting, you might paint those shapes in, but with negative painting, you simply paint around the shapes. So you create the shapes by painting around them. Now you could do this freehand without actually drawing the shape at all, or you can simply just paint the shape in without painting the shape itself if that makes sense. So I'm going to do two different, I guess slightly two different styles today, two paintings today using the negative painting technique. Uh, I will be drawing in my design, partly because it helps you see what I'm doing, but also because it allows me, once I get down to deeper levels, and I'll say a bit more about levels once I get into the paintings. So just using my Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolours and a piece of watercolour paper. And I'll put all the details below, as always. I've got a piece of 6x6 six six paper. I've measured it in a centimetre. I mix and match my measurements, sometimes centimetres, sometimes inches, but I think that's about three-eighths of an inch. And I'm just putting down a wash of water to start. Now I've got a lot of footage today, so I will put it on at speed. For this first painting, I'm basically going to use one colour, and it's a dark green. I think it's probably a sap green. I will add a little bit of black towards the end just to darken it. And all I'm doing is putting on a very light wash to start with. So I've got my paint really well watered down because I don't want it to be too dark. I'm going to give it a dry in between each stage. Now I'm just going to draw in some leaves and all I've done for this is I looked out my window, saw my cherry tree, no blossom on it now but lots and lots of leaves. So I've just kind of looked at a branch or a couple of little branches of it and what I'm doing here is I've drawn in my first layer of leaves. So those that are towards the front of this branch. Now what I'm doing is taking that same colour but with a bit more of the paint in it, so a bit more pigment in it, and I've just literally gone around all those leaves. And I'm now just rubbing out my lines and I'll do that between each layer. So I'm now drawing in the set of leaves that sit behind these leaves. So of course some of these will overlap and these are going to be all painted around again, so both the new set of leaves that I put in and that first set, and again I'm going slightly darker. So th this will give the effect of the top layer of leaves just having a little bit of colour, the second layer being a bit darker. Now I'm going around these quite quickly, obviously it looks even quicker because it is at speed, but uh, you know, I would normally try and be a little bit more careful, but I'm going over the lines here, but I'm not too concerned about that. So I'm now drawing in the next layer of leaves that's even further in, so further in towards the tree trunk. And again, these will all overlap. So I'm making this next colour a bit darker and mixing in some black this time because I do want it darker. So just going back in there with a bit more of the black, just really trying to, to darken it up. And you'll see there that I'm, I've now created three different colours of leaves. And what this does is to create depth. But you'll also see that I'm not actually painting the leaves at all. I'm creating the shapes by painting the negative space which goes around the leaves. And I'll jump ahead in just a moment. I just want you to see how the three lots of leaves I actually go around here and how it, the negative painting actually creates a shape. 
Sometimes when the spaces are getting smaller, just need a, a smaller detailed brush. Now at this sort of level, I find it quite difficult because I need to get my head in close. So, you know, I'm just jumping ahead. But there you can see the three different layers of leaves. I'm going to create a fourth layer now. I'm not drawing them in. I'm simply creating this by, again, painting the negative space. And I'm going to make this layer pretty dark. It's using the black straight. Although what I will do is... I will start to blend it out a little bit with some of the dark green, but just towards the edges, because I want it to be very dark on the inside there. So just showing you how I'm getting into those little spaces, creating a few more leaves in there. And I'm not going to draw in the branches or anything. This is just about demonstrating the actual leaves and how to get those Leaf, leaf shapes. So here I am, I'm just going to blend it out a little bit, adding in a little bit of the green, taking the black where I've got it, blending it out, and that's just to create a little bit of interest at the edges. So I now have four colours of leaves, all made really from that one green, just allowing the pigment to get darker with a little bit of black where necessary. Now, I want to kind of define some of the leaves a little bit, so I've taken a very, very small brush here and I'm just going to draw those lines in. I'm not making them even this time because the actual leaves themselves are not fully even, so I'm just using where the paint has kind of uh, blended a little bit together, just using those natural shapes that's been created that way. And I think this just helps define, and of course you do get a little bit of shadow anyway on the leaves that sit behind. And what I'll also do in a moment, uh, these cherry tree leaves have little kind of notches in them, it's difficult to describe them, but little notches and I'm just going to allow myself to just paint those in just with very small strokes. So again, it's painting them in the negative sense because I'm coming from the outside in. So just painting that as that negative space again. And this is just to add a little bit of interest to this particular piece. And there we have that finished and I've taken my masking tape off so I've got a nice neat edge. Now with this one I'm going to be a little bit looser and I'm just putting some dabs of water on there and I'm basically going to take a yellow, an orange and a red and I'm just going to add little drops of the colour into each of those little pools of water that I made to begin with. Taking my uh, spray bottle and then after I've sprayed it just a little bit, I'm just taking a cocktail stick and just pulling the paint out just to create a bit of interest. And what I'm going to do this time is a series of daisies, but I wanted this one to be much looser in style. And again, I'll dry in between each layer, adding a few more little blobs in there where I want to, because these will become the centres of the daisies. So now just going to draw very loose style daisies, just taking, uh, I think it's about three of these, and you'll see that in some instances the leaves are going to go under that one at the front, in other instances they may well go over. So I've got my three daisies to start. Now what I'm going to do is I'm taking the yellow and I'm just going to paint very loosely around these. And again, it's all about painting in the negative space. So I'm not painting the actual daisies themselves. I'm just painting around what will be the individual petals. 
but the principles of what I'm doing here are basically the same as the first one. I'm just going to create layers and through adding different colours we'll give colours to the actual daisies but also we'll start to create that feeling of depth. Drying it again and now I'm going to draw in my second set of daisies and you'll see that with this one there's even more layering between the top layer of daisies and the second layer. So just drawing that in. Not too concerned if all the petals are the same shape. I do want this to be very loose and flowing and just to have a, a kind of energy about it. So I think I paint in about four or five this time, drawing about four or five. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my next colour. So I started with the yellow, I'm now going to go to the orange and I'm going to do exactly the same. And as with the first painting, what I'm finding here, of course, is that where the petals are overlapping, I've got to define both the lower set of daisies and those that are in the, the foreground. So some of the little areas, the negative space areas, are actually getting quite small this time. And the more layers you do, the more difficult it kind of becomes. It's really one of these things that need a bit of focus. And I know a couple of times when I was doing this, I think especially when I got down to the next layer, I started to lose it a little bit, uh, lose my focus a little bit. And I think this is quite an interesting exercise because you're not, once you get to this stage, you're not looking at the actual petals at all. You're looking at those spaces around them. But every now and again I did find that I was looking at the, the kind of petal shape. But it's it's quite an interesting activity to do uh, because it, it kind of trains your brain to look at other things other than the normal shape that we would look at. So again I've dried it. I'm off onto my third layer of daisies. More difficult at this stage to make the daisies quite as free flowing. I've also drawn in the centre because I've lost some of my little blobby marks from the beginning, but that's okay. And I did leave my second set of, of pencil marks in there. So that's me got in another set of smaller daisies this time towards the back. And this time I'm going to go for the red. And exactly the same process, painting in the negative space. And again, making sure that I recognise that some of the petals are overlapping. So it starts to create some quite interesting shapes. And it does start to get a bit trickier seeing where, especially if there's maybe three leaves overlapping, three petals overlapping. So again, going in with a smaller brush because some of these spaces are very small. And sometimes I get to the point where I do need to go back to the centre of the flower and I know that was the place there where I kind of lost it a bit, I lost concentration and having to go back to the centre of the flower and work out where those petals would actually be going. So that's my third colour in. What I'm going to do now, I just want to define the flowers a little bit so I'm just doing a very sketchy line along each of the petals just with my ballpoint pen. It doesn't matter that uh, the petals aren't straight, I'm not looking for that, I'm just looking for a little bit more definition at this point. And this is helpful too for, for what I'm about to do next. So that one there just showed where the one petal was on top of the other. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to take some black and, oh no, I'm going to just put in a little bit more colour in the centre. I just decided that the daisies needed just a little bit more. So 
Again, just put a blob of water in and now just adding some colours in. I just felt they needed a bit more of a centre. Now that that's done, taking my small detail brush and I'm going in with a black. Now I'm not going to fill all the space in with a black and I'm going to do this quite loosely where there are various petals overlapping each other. I'm going to just bring that out a bit, add a bit of depth in by just adding the black in. But you'll see I'm not really, in the majority of cases, I'm not filling in all the area. And again, this just adds depth and it adds definition. Making a few lines just to show where the petals might be separated a bit. So keeping this very loose. But I think I had, you know, I, I took out quite a bit of the film today. Uh, I think even at that I still had an hour of footage. Just putting a few dots in the centre there. About an hour of foot footage, but actually I think I spent about two and a half hours on these. So here we have them. So I think this is a really interesting way to paint and I'm sure there's a lot of you in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group who have done this sort of thing before and if you haven't then, you know, whether you've done it before or not, I hope you enjoy doing it. So of course I'll leave a link to Nina's video below and I'll also leave a link to the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group if you would like to join us. So very loose style there. First one a bit more uh, controlled, a bit more detailed and of course just mainly using the one colour. So as always thanks so much for watching. I do hope you will join me again next time. Take care. Bye for now.